now I look like the biggest jerk on the planet. The way I just flew past everybody under that bridge was so disrespectful to every other motorist on the road with me, but I don't care. I'm driving a BMW M car. A couple months ago, I brought you a walk around video of the new BMW M2, and I'm happy to announce that somebody was finally crazy enough to let me borrow theirs. On a car like this, you really need to take it out on the road and experience it. And it's not like it's rainy and wet and cold or anything today which of course is a great combination for a 450 horsepower rear wheel drive M car. So I'm not gonna be able to go too crazy because again, it's somebody's car already and they'll probably see this video. Hi Brian. And two, these tires don't really look set up for low temperature, wet environments. And three, I just don't wanna get pulled over and arrested. So we're not gonna go too hard today. I have a much more in-depth full walk around video of this car in the showroom when it first arrived here in Utah. And that's gonna be linked below. I'm not gonna to go too in detail on this car because I really would rather drive it at the moment. And that's where that video was a bit lacking because I didn't actually get to drive it. So this video is gonna be more focused on the driving dynamics. The sound that it makes etc etc but despite that we are still going to do a basic walk around so let's go first off one important point that i want to make is that this m2 was very controversial in its design when it first came out but it has grown on me so much to the point where i kind of want to say that this is the best looking bmw in production right now yes the back end is a little bit too blocky and yes, the front end looks like it's poorly rendered with those strange looking grills, but at least they're the right shape this time. I think where this car really shines is the overall proportion, the whole three box sedan coupe kind of look where you have the hood, the roof, and the trunk line. The proportions have been absolutely nailed with this car. And the front end being completely different, especially with those carbon fiber buttresses on the side, is a little bit over the top and tacky if you ask me. It's a little bit too, look at me, performance car, but it's still something kind of cool. We move around to the back and it seems like the only thing that this shares with the regular two series would be the tail lights and the trunk lid. Unless of course you get the carbon fiber package with that really cool looking carbon fiber spoiler that juts out a little bit more. This is definitely a bit more simplistic and subtle, but I would get mine with that carbon fiber spoiler. And adding to the carbon fiber theme, there's a carbon fiber roof, which has been common to BMW M cars for ages. And it's sort of like a lightweight thing or also just dropping the center of gravity a little bit. And yeah, the lightweight theme makes sense until you realize that this car weighs 3,814 pounds, which is only 15 pounds less than the M4, okay? You think the M2, uh, it's a smaller car, it's gonna be a lot more communicative, it's gonna be a lot lighter and gonna just kind of shrink around you as you drive it along because of how lightweight it is compared to the M4. No, it only weighs 16 pounds less than the larger M4 and that is completely ridiculous. I mean, think of things that weigh 16 pounds. My bag, tripod, and phone together would probably in the back of this car make it weigh as much as the larger M4. And I'm wondering where all the extra weight goes on an M2 because it's a lot smaller so you'd think that it's be going to be a lot lighter than an M4. I mean is there concrete underneath the trunk floor or something like it doesn't really make that much sense. Cue all the BMW fanboys that are going to be commenting why I am wrong. Quick look at the interior of the new M2. The first thing you notice when you get into this car is that it is paired with the optional six-speed manual transmission which is no cost extra option and it's also no cheaper than the automatic. And this is probably going to be the last manual transmission BMW ever because BMW hates manuals. And I think that's because a lot of the car reviewers talk about how BMW manuals feel a little bit flobbery, don't give you that much feedback. The clutches are a bit hard to get used to. So they thought, nobody likes our manuals. We shall never make manuals again. We've also got this fun little application called M Drift Analyzer. It would appear that Brian has never tried this because his best drift is rated at zero stars, zero minutes, zero degrees, and for zero yards. Come on, Brian, what are you doing? Do you need me to set a drift record for you to beat in your own car? Do you really need me to do that? 
I'm not going to, don't worry. If you have a nice, fine lady in the passenger seat and you wanna impress her, just do a five-star drift, and then I'm sure she's gonna tell all of her friends about how hot you are. You also have M lap timer, which is pretty clear what it does. It times your laps, you don't really need to do that. You also have a driver's display right in front of you, this really cool digital gauge cluster, which has some cool angles on it. It's meant to look sporty and cool, but they made sure to include your music that you're listening to just in case right in the middle that's important also there is a really cool active drivers display heads-up display thing which shows lots of colors and cool things like that and it changes depending on what mode you're in it's really cool and i'll talk about that more when i drive it in a second let's have a look at the raging beast that lies underneath this because M engines never have any problems ever. This is the S58 motor, which is a three liter twin turbo six cylinder. In this car, it makes 453 horsepower and 406 pound feet of torque, which is around 20 less than in the M4, but it makes the exact same torque as the M4. There's versions of this engine that have way over 500 horsepower, like the M4 CSL has 550 horsepower. So I imagine this engine is pretty easy to tinker with and get a lot more power out of. But in this car right now, 453 horsepower, and it's mated to that six-speed manual. So let's start that drive. So a manual M car is always gonna be something special, no matter what it is cooler than any X5M, X6M, XM, because you know that anybody who drives in a car like this actually really cares about an engaging, fun driving experience, right? Just to add on to that theme. <laughs> yeah, she, it struggles a bit when it comes to uh, grip on the rear end uh, on a cold, rainy day like today let's just say that and i just i think i just lost brian's keys under the seat when i did that here's the thing is that it's still got heated steering wheel i've still got heated seat i've got automatic wipers so i'm still in the lap of luxury driving this thing oh yeah and the ride the ride is definitely oh yeah the ride is bouncy that is immediately apparent they have to hide the fact that it weighs exactly the same pretty much as the m4 somehow so they're going to tighten up the suspension my biggest complaint with these BMW manuals, I have to say, is the clutch. For me, at least, this clutch, I have found it very difficult to get used to in the M4, and in this, it's also quite tricky. This shifter, however, totally fine. I have no complaints about it at all. I mean, it's notchy enough. I mean, maybe I'm just used to the worn-out, flobbery shifter in my 190,000-mile, almost rusty E46. That could be what that is. But I think the shifter is totally fine. Also, heel toe down shifts are really good, but if you can't be bothered to do rev matching, there is also the um, auto rev match feature, which I don't ever use that, and come on. All right, we're gonna open it up here. <laughs> this thing is a complete riot, <laughs> wow. I had traction control on there, and it was flashing at me like, Nine, what are you doing? Calm down. Wasn't really doing enough. I could still feel the back end of the car trying to step away from me, but I'm a real good driver. I know what I'm doing, right? <laughs> what? It feels just as set your pants on fire as the M4, and it should. Again, it has pretty much the exact same amount of horsepower and weighs exactly the same. So where this car really should actually shine is in handling and things like that. But in terms of how it's driving just in a straight line, this thing is hilarious. I and mean, there's so many different ways to configure this car. It's unbelievable. It would take all day for me to go through every possible configuration. There's your engine power. You have three settings for that. There's three settings for the suspension, two settings for the steering, and two settings for the brakes. It's I think it's a brake-by-wire system. BMW invented drive-by-wire, the throttle, electronic throttle thing, and when that had a problem, it would go into limp-home mode so it had like basically no throttle response and was slow as an absolute dog. This car, I kind of hope that it doesn't have like a limp home mode for the brakes. Oh yeah, this thing is 
it feels planted. It's an M car. But for daily driving, so let's put it in, I think M1 was Brian's comfortable driving mode. Yes, everything is in comfort. It still is a little bit too bouncy, but I mean, who gets into an M2 expecting it to have a ride like pillows on dream clouds? It's just not gonna happen. I need to figure out how to put it into more sporty driving mode without crashing. I really gotta like pull over and figure this out. Engine in Sport Plus, gear shift assistant off, chassis in Sport Plus, steering Sport. We're just gonna have everything in Sport and just feel how different that is. The brakes are a lot more sensitive already, I can feel, and the steering is a lot more sensitive as well. And honestly, I really don't like, like changing your brake mode. It is genuinely very noticeable to me. I just say, I just don't like this clutch at all. Jesus. I just hate this clutch. I find it so difficult to drive this car smoothly. I feel like I should be enjoying the manual more in this car, but I'm not because this clutch is driving me crazy. Now I'm at a traffic light behind in Elantra N. This dude thinks he has a performance car, and I don't think he does at all. And when you have everything in Sport Plus mode, you get a little shift light in your heads up display as well. That's actually useful if you're driving it on the track I and mean, you want to know how close you are to the red line and you really want to go at it. I mean, that's just, they really did think of everything. I don't find it when I'm trying to drive it regularly in the rain like this, that it's flashing traction control at me constantly, which is good. That means it's better putting down its power. <laughs> in a car like this, I would 100% recommend keeping traction control on on a day like this. Especially if it's not your car, I just don't want to, you know, don't want to have to have that conversation with somebody. On the highway, it is a little bit droney when you have the engine in Sport Plus mode. Quite a, quite a bit droney, actually. A little bit too much noise, I think, on the highway. It's quite windy. I am finding myself having to yell a little bit on the highway. Oh, and it's quite bouncy too. Not to say that this isn't a fantastic experience that I'm having. I am very much enjoying this car, actively looking for things to complain about. That's my, that's what I'm trying to do. And I'm coming up mostly short, but there are a couple things. So let's put it in six gear, 65 miles an hour, and just floor it. Just to feel the torque. Oh yeah. It takes a second, but once those turbos spool up, it pulls pretty hard and it's a really, really gorgeous car. The looks have grown on me for sure. From when I first saw it in pictures, I thought it was completely ridiculous, over the top, way too blocky and boxy on that rear and front bumper. But when you see one of these things in person, the pictures don't do this car justice. It is absolutely beautiful looking, especially that middle section with the flared wheel arches. It's just a fantastic looking car. And, it's a fantastic driving car too. Again, at high speeds, when the revs are very low in sixth or fifth gear and you floor it, you really feel it just build up its boost and then it just starts flying. But around town, you don't feel that much turbo lag at all, which is good. That means it's lively and doesn't feel slow at all. You can tell BMW designed this car around it being an automatic first and a manual second because this digital gauge cluster will flash the gear number at you and when you go from first to second, it'll go one, neutral, two. Just like you would if you're playing Forza Horizon or whatever with a gaming steering wheel and a gaming shifter. That's what it's reminding me of right now. Let's blast past these guys. Wowie! Now I look like the biggest jerk on the planet. The way I just flew past everybody under that bridge was so disrespectful to every other motorist on the road with me, but I don't care. I'm driving a BMW M car. Everybody that I just flew past is now sitting around me, probably looking at me like this. Yeah, you just have to, first and second has to be slow. <laughs> My favorite part of this car by a country mile is shifting 
from second to third. It is absolutely hilarious. The way in the transition from second gear to third, it just flies forward on you is so addicting. Yeah, it's, it's not for everybody. I mean, I don't see this car as a very good daily driver. It's a little bit too rough for something like that. And this clutch is annoying, but for something to take out and just have fun with for smiles per gallon, it's hard to think of much that's going to be the M2. This thing is an absolute peach. So everybody, that's going to do it for me on this video. I hope everybody enjoyed. I know I certainly did, except for going from first to second gear. But I'll stop complaining about that. I want to thank Brian from the bottom of my heart for letting me drive his M2. I haven't even met the guy yet. Thanks everybody for watching. Everybody have an awesome day. Bye-bye.